Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another quick look video. I thought I would do it from the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verses 24 and 25. And the word of God reads this way. Do not defile yourselves with any of these things. For by all these the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. For the land is defiled. Therefore I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it. And the land vomits out its inhabitants. In Leviticus 18, we have a chapter that is devoted to speaking to the nation of Israel about sexual immorality. In fact, if you begin at verse 1 and you go all the way to the verses that I'm talking about, you get sexual immorality that involves incest, adultery, um, homosexuality. You also even get um, child worship the Molech which somehow, way, has to do with some type of sexual perversion. So when we read in verse 25, do not defile yourselves with any of these things, the things that this verse is talking about is the sexual immorality that came in the verses before it. And notice it says, do not defile yourself. Because if you're doing something in a sexual immoral way, what you're saying is all of God's commandments as it pertains to relationships, marriage, and sex are not good. But they are good. They're good, they're pure, and they're right. And if you do the opposite of it, you're going to what? Defile yourself. You're defiling your own body and the body of the other person that you're doing the sexual morality with. And it says, for by all these things the nations are defiled. Now when he says the nations are defiled... He's talking about the nations outside of the nation of Israel. They're defiled because they do these type of things. That's why you notice at the end of the verse says, which I am casting out before you. God is going to cast out those nations and people of those nations from Israel because they're doing wickedness. When you read in the book of Leviticus, when God's telling his people not to do something or to do something, He's always doing it for their good. But the things he's telling them not to do, nine times out of ten, those pagan nations were doing, and they're to be set apart from the pagan nations, and that includes their sexual activities. Verse 25 goes, For the land is defiled. Now notice he's saying the land is defiled. Now the land here could mean the inhabitants of the land, but it could also mean the land itself, the ground that they're actually on. And that's why it says, therefore I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it. Notice he says he visits, and that means he's putting judgment against what? The punishment of its iniquity upon it. It is the land. When God judges the people in the land, he's also going to judge through the land. It could be a famine. It could be an earthquake. It could be anything like that. Now God certainly judges people. But many times he judges it through the land. And then you notice it says, And the land vomits out its inhabitants. So in the judgment, the land itself, whatever God's going to do to it, is literally going to kick the people out of the land. It could be something devastating that just runs them out, or even literally kills them. Dear Christian, in these two verses in Le Leviticus 18, we see... A serious, righteous, holy punishment against sexual immorality. It's nothing to joke about. And today as Christians, this is one area where I think many times Christians don't take seriously sexual immorality. Fornication, adultery, LGBTQ. We need to know that pureness is something that God wants his people to be involved with, particularly when it comes to to sexual acts. In fact, people should have a Christian marriage, and I'm talking about believers, and they should have a sexual relationship in that marriage. If you're a young Christian man or woman and you're not married yet, you shouldn't defile yourself with sexual immorality. Look at the punishment in these verses in the Old Testament. Now, as New Testament saints, we're like, well, that's not going to happen to me, so I think I can run around and do what I want to do. No. If you read Hebrews 13.4, you see that the marital bed is undefiled and it's honorable. But you know what the next part of the verse says? 
fornicators and adulterers, God is going to judge. God's judgment is still concrete. It's still the same. He's still going to judge. And just like he judged back then, sexual immorality, literally judging the people and the land, don't be shocked if God judges you for being sexual immoral. That's why unsaved people need to know that sexual immorality is not a joke in God's eyes. And as Christians, we need to take that seriously as well. Right now, we're living in a, in a land, in lands, no matter where you're at as, as a Christian, that's so sexually immoral that it just seems like it's the norm. You see it in movies, you see it in the colleges, you see it in schools, I mean, you see it all over the place. And you know what? A good Christian marriage and purity seems to be laughed at. We're calling evil good and good evil. But according to these two verses, that's nothing to laugh about. And we need to warn, particularly unbelievers, about that sexual immorality, those sexual sins, because they will be judged. So this is Leviticus 18, verses 24 through 25. Just wanted to do a quick look to remind you, Christian, that being sexually pure is a good thing. And if you were sexually immoral before you were saved, God washes you and you have a clean slate. Start that way. Don't go back to what you used to be. As always, if the videos on this channel have encouraged your Christian walk and edified you in any way whatsoever, but you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you want to, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments, please do so, but please don't be snarky. Please do not be profane. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do. And until we do another quick look, remember that sexual activity in the marital bed between a man and a woman that are believers is fine. God ordains that. We're supposed to enjoy one another and be one and be fruitful and multiply. But if you're not married and you're just delving into fornication adultery, and in fact, even in Leviticus verse, they even talked about bestiality. When you start delving into all those things, you're defiling yourself. You're defiling yourself because God's commands about love and marriage and sex are good. And if you do the opposite, you know what? You're marring it. You're spoiling it. You're making it something nasty. And that should never be, particularly for Christians. But for the unsaved, we need to show them that to show them that they need to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and God bless.